Hi, in this video we'll look into building a simple file watcher task using script task. In our last video we talked about how to work with variables in script task. You know, in this video we'll use that knowledge uh, and then we'll work on creating a simple file watcher task um, in the script task SSIS using C sharp programming language. So let's get a little high level overview of uh, what we're going to build uh, in this script in this uh, file watcher task. So the goal of this file watcher task is there will be a um, a data flow task to load the file, but uh, it has to know when the file has arrived. So this particular file watcher task uh, using the C sharp uh, programming language with the script task actually monitors the file. When the when the when the file arrives, it triggers the downstream job, which downstream data flow task, and then loads the file into the date table. Once the file has been loaded, we can and we can talk about how to uh, delete the file or move to a file to another folder. So this particular uh, you know file watcher uh, monitors the particular folder continuously. Uh, when the file arrives, it triggers the data flow task, and this repeats uh, and this repeats itself until the package has been stopped. So that is a high level overview of this package that we are going to build. So to talk about, you know, we, we are, I mean, the data flow task is pretty simple. You know, we have a, a flat file ha is mapped to a table in a database. But uh, we will focus more on the script task, you know, or the file watcher task here. So the high level overview of this file watcher task is pretty simple. Um, first of all, we'll first get the location of the, uh, lo you know, file in a variable which is stored in an SSIS variable and we load it into a C sharp variable. And then first thing we'll do is we'll put a while loop and check if the file exists. And if the file does not exist, we'll wait for five seconds. And if the file exists, then this while loop breaks. The next step is we'll check if the file is logged. The reason why we need this step is that if the file is being still copied into the folder and if the file is big enough, you know, it may take uh, a minute or so to copy. During that time, we want to make sure that we don't want to trigger the data flow task yet because having the file locked or being copied by another process, it won't be able to open the file to read the file or to actually load the file into a table. So we need to check whether the file is logged. So if the file is locked, you know, we will wait for five seconds. If the file is not logged in the next while loop, the while loop breaks um, and then the task will result in a success. So this is a very simple, you know, um, a file watcher task that will help you get started, you know, building something in script task. So you know, uh, now we know the, the, the high level overview and the details that we're going to do. Let's go ahead and jump into the, uh, the our data development environment. So this is uh, the package environment. I already set up the data flow task. Uh, the data flow task is mapped to a flat file in a folder. Um, and this there is also a variable that contains the file name or the file location. And the same variable is being used for the um, the, the connection string of the uh, flat file um, as an expression so that if we in case if we change the variable the connection to the flat file uh, as uh, also changes so that we will use the same variable in our script task to actually locate the, um, the file. Now in this case the file location can be a local folder or a, uh, or a SIF share or an NFS share as long as we have access to run. So one thing you have to uh, notice is that during the development environment, you might have access to that folder, but when you set up the package to run continuously in another environment, make sure that particular account or user has access to that particular file to run the package. So, you know, uh, all things considered, let's go ahead and start. Um, so I'm going to drag and drop the script task from the, you know, SSIS toolbox into the control flow pane and I'm going to make sure that script task is connected to the data flow task as a precedence contains constraint such a way that script task triggers the data flow task. The execution of the completion of script task will trigger the data flow task. The successful completion. So if I edit the script task, uh, the, uh, the, the thing that we discussed before when we talked about variables is that if you want to read a variable from the SSIS, you need to make sure you need to select this read only variables uh, from the list of variables. So the current, the, the, in this scale, in this case, the, the user uh, customer file is a variable that we would like to read. So I'm going to make sure I copy this particular value, you know, so that I can use it in the uh, script. So I'm going to click the edit scripts. Once we go to the edit script, uh, 
Let me just maximize this. Once we go to the edit script, uh, as we talked about in our first discussion, there is a uh, by default the script task loads a template. So we're gonna skip through all of that, and the place where we uh, the where we have to work is the the main method. So this is where we normally add our code. So first thing I disc uh, as we said, we know where first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get the variable from the SSIS and load it into a C sharp variable. So in this case, I'm gonna take a a string. A string data type uh, and a variable called file location from the uh, the DTS class and the variable collection variables collection so in this case we are going to access our variable I'm just gonna paste the value that I copied from the, um, from the script task edited pane so in this case, I'm going to take the value of this variable and the output of this uh, variable is an object. So we need to convert it into a string. So once uh, we had got the value um, of this variable, um, one thing that I have to, uh, we need to make sure is that anytime we develop uh, or you know write code into the main method, always use the try catch method. The try catch will make sure to capture any errors during the runtime. So right now in this case, we are not going to um, use anything. We are not going to do anything with the um, the error that we are going to catch. But uh, in this case, we are just going to, you know, use this try catch loop. But in the future, I'm going to, you know, show you how to actually lo log this exception into an SSIS log. But for now, you know, I'm just going to leave this as an empty. So we'll make sure that all of our code we write is in this try loop so that, you know, any error or any runtime error that might occur during in this try loop gets captured in this exception. So right now we'll leave, leave this blank. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, when we talked in the when we when we're going to talk in our next, uh, you know, video, we'll talk about how to use the DTS logging or fire event mechanism to capture the error. So for now, we got the location um, of, the, you know, we got the variable value into a string variable um, called file location. So the next step is actually check if the file exists. You know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, in my earlier video that all this, the video, the, the this video, part, this particular video series is, is um, to, you know, anybody who is, is, who does not know much knowledge about C sharp and be able to build um, something using C sharp in script task. So, we can uh, the most of these things are available internet so all we have to do is uh, file exists c sharp so as <clears throat> if you go to the msdn document um there will be a lot of examples and you can you should be able to easily use these examples to copy the uh, the things that you need uh, from the internet so the idea is to develop things you know bits and pieces uh, that's are all that are already available in the internet so there is a method called file.exist in the namespace of uh, system.io. So, and that's part of the base method uh, that comes with, you know, the framework. So all we have to do is we have to, uh, you know, use this method. So this method returns if a file exists true, if a file does not exist as a false. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this method. In this case, it's looking at this variable string variable called cur, cur file, but we're going to change that. So um, we are going to set up. So file exists. In this case, the location of the file is this one. So as we as we talked about, we are going to set up a while loop. Okay. So if this file does not exist, which means it's false, we want to continue the while loop. Okay, and we want to continue the while loop with a five second delay so that every loop, it, every time it checks, we want to make sure it waits for five seconds because, um, you know, there is no need for it to check real time, you know, every millisecond or microsecond. So in this case, we'll use a system dot uh, threading dot thread dots, you know, this uh, or the sleep method. We'll make sure we give it about, you know, in milliseconds, 5,000 milliseconds. So it's going to be five seconds. So as soon as you, uh, this is our first while loop uh, that we talked about. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is um, here, one thing. 
as we don't uh, we use the file dot exist better but it but 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 we did not refer you know uh, we did not import the class or you know the namespace in our um, you know in our import statement so we need to make sure that we import the system dot io namespace here so as soon as you import you will be able to access all the methods you know all the classes inside the namespace so as soon as you do that you can see the error is gone so make sure you do that as well so this is our while loop okay uh, this is our first while loop and the next thing that we have to do is we have to check particular um, you know if the file is logged and uh, unfortunately there is no easy way to check a particular file is logged uh, the only way you can do is by try to open the file if you open the file if the file is can't open um, they, although there are other ways but this is a simple and easy way for us to learn now um, so if you uh, look at a discussion in the Stack Overflow. Uh, there is already a discussion about how to check a particular file is logged in C Sharp. So I'm going to just use this particular script that is already available there. Uh, here, this is a this is a method called uh, a simple method called file is logged. You pass the file location um, as an input uh, as a string, and then the it open it tries to open the file. If the file does not open, that means the file is logged. If the file opens, then the file is um, you know. Um, the file is not logged so the you you know so let's copy this into our program so this method lies outside of the main method so uh, and then we're going to use the next file uh, another while loop to check whether the file exists Sorry, uh, we're gonna check make sure the file actually is logged. So in this case, it's gonna be is file logged, okay? And the the file location, and if the file is logged, that means in this case it's true. We wanna continue the the loop. So let me just add another five second delay here. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much our file watching task as we talked about let's save this and make sure there are no warnings or errors um, in this task so let's save this and close this and click OK so let me go ahead and save this so let me make sure that I'm gonna delete this file because it's already there so I'm going to run my package so you can see here that the the script task is actually running, um, you know. But uh, in this case, it's it's going to still keep monitoring that file for every five seconds, like we you know programmed. So let me go ahead and uh, copy the file. Okay. So as you can see here. Uh, I'm going to uh, this location new files. This is where it's monitoring the file. Okay. As soon as I copy this particular file that I'm trying to monitor, you can see as soon as it is copied, the script task execution finishes and it goes to the data flow task where it's actually um, writing the you know, or loading the file into the table. So that that's that's our whole goal uh, is to actually watch the file and trigger the data flow task. Now what we have to do is we have to tweak this. Um, um, you know to have this executed you know a continuously monitor a folder so for this the next step that we have to do is is to delete the file to delete the file we can use the file system task but uh, you know as we are trying to learn the script task here so let's do that using a script task as well using the file system task is going to be pretty simple delete file so let's open the edit script and as as I mentioned before we need to make sure that we we use the file location because that's where the file has been located so let's click edit Let me just copy this and let's clip the click the edit script So uh, we're just going to go to the straight to the main method and the same thing we are going to do is we are going to actually um, load the SSIS variable into a, a C-sharp variable.
so once we have the location now we have to delete the file so uh, you know if i if you just uh, google you know file deletion using c sharp uh, you you I, I landed on in this msdn page how to copy delete move files in in c sharp programming so you can see that uh, there are different examples to actually delete the file or move the file in this case we want to delete the file so um I'm going to use this um, the try you know this this entire um, try catch loop and remember we don't need to check the file exists because we already did you know we know the file already exists so I'm going to copy this script and uh, paste it in my uh, you know script task where where I want to delete my file and uh, you know we don't need to we don't need to refer the base class here because it see it looks like the example is already using the base class method you know extension to the to the methods or the classes that he's already using there so all in this case all we have to do is make sure we remove this particular string which is the location of the file in this case we are going to use our file location c sharp variable to actually load the file so uh, this is a pretty much a simple file deletion task using the um, script task so i'm going to just save this particular um, task i'm going to click okay okay now um, let me just uh, rename this So remember, notice if that file is already there, if I run this particular job, it should automatically, you know, go ahead and actually go to the next step. So let's wait for it to load the file and delete the file just to make sure that all our steps are working correctly as expected. Okay, so if, it, if I check this particular folder, the file has been deleted. Uh, and make sure the uh, the user that you're trying to run under or develop or you know deploy that user has access to do these operations um, now let's i'm gonna stop this package and as i discussed we want to be running this package continuously okay so to do that i'm just gonna make a simple tweak here i'm gonna put a for loop and i'm gonna loop this indefinitely so that means i'm just gonna copy this all my tasks and move it here okay and then in my for loop container i'm going to make sure that uh, this particular um, task runs forever so i'm going to click okay i'm going to make sure uh, true and then uh, i'm going to make sure the data flow task also has a delay val delay validation to true uh, because when it starts the package the file might not be there so we want to make sure that the package validation is delayed so in this case, uh, I, I had put a for loop container and in that for loop container, I just put, you know, uh, one double equal to one. That means it this is going to execute indefinitely. So let me start the package. Okay. Okay. So the for loop is running and the file and as, as the file watcher as well. So let me go ahead and if I go to my, you know, this, the file that I'm trying to. So if I copy this file into this new files, um, it, it should go to the data flow task and uh, once the file has been loaded successfully the file should be deleted and uh, because this is a um, because this is a for loop that runs forever you can see that script task or the file watcher task is trying to monitor the file again so if I copy the file uh, it should pick it up and the data flow task will load the file and the, the last task will actually delete the file so that's it you know this is um, a, an easy you know way to actually develop uh, a script task using the bits and pieces that are already available in the internet you know so feel free if you have any questions comments you know um, you know if you have any other way if you want to learn or if you want to tweak this particular process let me know i can you know um, uh, uh, show you those as well um, so that's it for all you know um, thank you for watching